effectively as, as well as alternative employment opportunities. We encourage you to listen attentively and engage with our presenters throughout the session. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop them in the chat and we'll address them at the end of the uh, session. So without further ado, sit back and relax, enjoy your lunch, and I hand it over to Chris and Sonia. Good afternoon, everyone. As Alicia mentioned, my name is Chris Ardwan, and thank you for joining us for Financial Stability with Family Houston. I am one of the financial coaches with Family Houston. I'm located in South Houston in the Bay Area. In just a few minutes, you will again meet Sonia Reeves. She is the bilingual and employment coach located in Wilder County. Today, Sonia, would you switch? Absolutely. Today, I'd like to discuss with you some credit knowledge. I will be mindful of your time during this hour. I hope that you find some information that I'm going to share beneficial and the hour enjoyful. Some of the things I'm going to discuss today will be what is credit, credit versus debt, benefits of good credit, steps to building good credit, credit scores and reports, predatory products, fintech loans, and secured versus unsecured credit products. Did you go back to slide number two, Sonia? Yep. All right, if you would humor me, let's have a little fun. Let's take this credit quiz. It won't be for pass or fail. It's just to see where your credit knowledge is. If you would answer the questions one through three in your chat box or just think the answer out to yourself and then I'll go back and I'll give you the answers to the questions. During this session, if you find anything that you need right away that you see beneficial, please feel free to utilize your technology. Take a picture if you're on a computer using your phone or take a snap or a snippet of your screen while we are presenting during the presentation. As Alicia mentioned, it will live on our website. So just for fun, let's go for it. In the chat box, would you answer question one? As consumers, we can have more than one credit score, true or false? Two, if you would answer A, B, or C, name the three major U.S. credit bureaus. And number three, which factor affects your credit score the most, A, B, C, or D? All right. So let's take a look at that. Number one, as consumers, we can have more than one credit score. True or false? That is true. We can have more than one credit score and credit report. Those are two different things. The report actually lists all of your accounts and your score is an actual numerical score. Number two, name the three major U.S. credit bureaus, Will. We know American Express, MasterCard, and Visa are actual credit card companies and Bank of America, Citibank, and Chase are U.S. banks. So the answer would be B. And number two actually answers number one. Number three, what factor affects your credit score the most? And this is what most people fail to realize, but it's very important. That answer would be D, your payment history. All right, let's take a look at what is credit. Credit. Credit is when you have the ability to pay for something over time. It's also the amount of money a bank or a person is willing to loan you. It's your financial reputation. Most people fail at building credit or keeping a high score because they don't understand credit. Well, here's an example of the structure of what credit is. There's usually two facets of credit, a revolving line of credit 
or an installment loan. That installment loan could be your car loan, your mortgage loan, and usually that revolving line of credit, mostly store credit cards, right? We're all familiar with those credit cards. That revolving line is going to be reusable credit. That payment is going to be based on what you spend. It's based on how much you owe, right? That could be an amount that changes per month, depending on how much you charge. An installment loan is just going to be one loan, one lump sum. You should have a regular payment for that. And either of these structures could be secured or unsecured. That means a deposit from you or no deposit from you. What is credit versus debt? A lot of people get that confused sometimes because they think, well, credit is credit. Well, no, sometimes we can make credit into debt, which is not a good thing. Credit is making your money work for you. That's a good way to use credit. That's being money smart. Use credit to invest in something that's going to increase in value. You may want to pay for your education, start a business and be careful with that, or also purchasing a home. But taking out a loan or using a credit card to buy things that don't increase in value will equal to debt. And that debt can sometimes equal a low credit score, which can cause you financial harm. There are some benefits to good credit. A good credit score can increase your housing options, expand your job opportunities. It can lower interest rates on loans and lower the cost of insurance for cars, homes, and your utility deposits. But on the opposite of the spectrum, a low credit score could cost you hundreds of thousands or more in interest throughout your life. Now, back to what affects your credit score, again, can be a misunderstanding by a lot of people. And so some things that positively affect your score could be paying your bills on time. Sometimes we know that can be difficult, no judgment, but that is the main factor to keeping that score high. Taking out a small loan and paying it back as agreed could actually raise your score because it could increase your debt to income ratio and having a checking or savings account. That could actually have a positive impact because that could allow you to set up automatic payments for your credit accounts, which means you won't miss a date, which means you won't be late and you won't lose FICO points. Some things that can negatively impact your score could be late payments. Now, with that being said, don't be nervous. Sometimes we do pay late and our account holders, the creditors, they may charge us a late fee, two days late, five days late, 10 days late. But if you are 30 days late, the credit bureaus will charge you FICO points. They will reduce your score. Too many credit cards could be a negative impact and also have, having high balances on your credit cards could cause you to have a decrease in your FICO score. Some other things that could cause a negative impact to your credit scores. But again, as a financial coach, no judgment here. Sometimes we are in emergency situations where we feel like we have to utilize these financial instruments to, for our better or greater good. But they can have a negative impact on our FICO scores. So places like buy here, pay here, car loans, payday and auto title loans, high cost student loans from for-profit schools. There is a difference in for-profit and not-for-profit schools. Government loans, the Department of Education loans are not-for-profit. Promise to wipe clean high fee credit repair services. Now, how can that affect your credit? Well, credit repair is legal if done the right way. There's no way to wipe your credit clean. And if someone is charging you one lump sum to do so, they're probably not going to go about it with legal ways. For safe and reliable credit repair, contact Family Houston. 
We are here to help. We do have financial coaches throughout the Houston area, or you can contact the National Foundation for Credit Counseling. Contact information on your screen. Other predatory products could include rent to own places, which include high fees and hidden charges. And the costs outweigh more than what the item is usually worth most times. We just completed tax season and there are those tax refund scams where they offer you a temporary bank account at $50 or more to fee to receive your funds on a certain debit card. Or you have those instant refunds where you get that high cost loan for two weeks. Here with Family Houston, I'm located in the United Way building and we partner with Baker Ripley to offer those free tax preparation services. So now you're asking, well, Chris, where do I start? We want to start with reviewing your credit. We always encourage you to visit annualcreditreport.com to get your three bureau reports for free. Those three bureaus, again, are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. The three programs do, the three bureaus do have a program that allows you to retrieve your reports for free. The FICO scores located on that website are not free. Also, if you don't have a social security number, you can still receive a report, but you'll have to mail in your request. Again, you can also schedule with a family Houston financial coach. You will receive a free TransUnion credit report consultation and a free FICO score. You can also visit Credit Karma. Lots of people do, but just be knowledgeable that they only offer two of your three credit reports and they offer what is called a Vantage score, not the FICO or the Fair Isaac score. The Vantage score can be different. It's not wrong, just different and the fight for also your financial institutions and sometimes your online credit card account will offer you a credit score. Make sure to check if it's a FICO or Vantage. They won't hide it. It usually says it, FICO or Vantage. Let's look at some steps to good credit. Well, Simply check your credit score and monitor it. Again, annualcreditreport.com or visit your financial coach with Family Houston. You can start if you want to start credit or rebuild credit by opening a secured credit card. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Move on to other credit building products and graduate onto an unsecured card. Also, apply for unsecured unsecured loan. Responsible responsible behavior like paying your bills on time and keeping low debt can help you to build your credit. Now let's take a look at what is a credit score. Your credit behavior and history are given a score. It's given a FICO or a Vantage, that FICO, Fair Isaac, or that Vantage, that new up and coming score. And remember, they don't hide if it's a FICO or a Vantage and the two scores can be different. The FICO score ranges from 300 through 850, 300 being very poorly or bad, 850 being excellent. Your credit score does tell creditors if you're a good risk for a loan. A lot of times we don't understand why am I being turned down? It's because of those credit scores and the credit factors that go along with those scores. People with low credit scores tend to pay higher interest rates and often cannot get a loan or a credit card. This is just a simple example of how someone with good credit versus someone with not so good credit would end up paying over the cost of a lifetime for a simple flat screen TV. So the simple payment methods, as you can see, have a big difference cash versus that payday loan. And again, no judgment if that's your payment methods, but we wanna help get you away from those type of payment methods. Now, building credit with secured credit. There are different methods and different avenues to build your credit. Some companies ask you for a deposit out of your pocket. And there are some, like Fingerhood, that may not ask for a deposit, but mm, they may not offer you the flexibility 
of being able to purchase your basic needs. Those are more of wants. And we always want to look at our needs versus our wants. So when we're trying to start credit or rebuild credit, there are lots of places, financial institutions that may offer a secured credit card or a secured loan. Some of them may be your old school brick and mortar places, and some of them may be online like Chime. Some of the places start as low as $100. I believe Chime is one of those. And then there are others that will ask you for $250 or more. The amount of the deposit that you make will be your credit line. And so once you choose your financial institution and choose your card and you decide how much of your income is disposable for you to make this deposit to start this line, well, you apply, the bank accepts your deposit, that amount will be your credit line. They'll order your card, most of them sometimes pretty fancy little cute mem memorabilia cards. Once you receive it, you activate it, and then you start to track it and pay it. Hopefully, you will remember to stay below that 30% utilization. We'll talk more about that later. But basically, if you deposit $300 to start your secured credit line, then you would try to stay between usage of $100 to $200. Also with secured credit cards, just know that back to that structure, it is a revolving line of credit, which means your payment is based on how much you use. The credit line is based on your security deposit. And so that means to start the line of credit, you will need to make a security deposit to hold that available balance. And again, try to utilize your 30% rule. As a tip, you could make a regular payment bill and put that on your secured card and have that bill paid automatically. And then set up your online bill pay from your checking account to pay off your card. This would create a cycle of on-time payments, which would help increase your credit score. Also with unsecured credit cards, you always want to evaluate some things, but also the creditor is ev evaluating you. They are looking at your credibility and they're looking at your credit worthiness. Your credit worthiness determines, is determined by several factors, including your repayment history once again and that credit score. But when you are looking to apply, you wanna make sure to evaluate the creditor. You wanna look at what the annual percentage rate is they're offering. You want to look at the penalty fees and good news in that category. On March the 5th, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has finalized a rule limiting that penalty for late fees to $8 per incident. And that's down from the average of $32, which if you've had credit in the past, you've probably at one time or another experienced that $32 late fee. They found it to be quite excessive, and it doesn't allow people to actually get back on track to rebuild. You want to evaluate the annual fees, and hopefully you will apply and be approved for a card which offers you rewards in the form of cashback points or maybe even flight mileage. Now, there are some other avenues to building credit. We could take a look at credit builder CDs or certificates of deposits. A certificate of deposits allows you to borrow money and it stays in an account for a period of time. It's there for safekeeping for about 12 to 24 months. You will make a regular payment on this as if it were a credit card or a credit account. And that payment again stays in that account. This allows you to build savings and a credit line at the same time, some organizations, some nonprofits will offer you what is called a matched savings. You have to do some research or meet with your financial coach from Family Houston. Unsecured loans. There are some steps to choosing the right one, but before taking out a loan, consider some of the following. Consider the loan amount. Sometimes people will go at seeking and applying for a loan and they don't know exactly how much they need 
or exactly what items they need it for. Underwriters want to know what is this money for and exactly how much do you need? And your confusion will cause you to be declined. You want to take a look at the interest rate. That's the price, how much you borrow in the money. Hopefully, the interest rate will always be low. You want to look at the long terms. That's how long. The frequency of your payment, how often. If you only paid once a month, well, you don't need a payment that comes every two weeks. You want to look at the total cost of the loan, how much you have to pay back in full. And again, hopefully, this should always be low as possible. For those of you that have student loans, consolidating your student loans could raise your credit score with just one phone call. But of course, before pursuing any type of financial transaction, it's always a good idea to determine how it will affect your credit rating because a lower credit score can make it more difficult to obtain credit and other loans in the future. But in the case of consolidating your student loans, the good news is this is a process that can actually have a very positive impact on your credit score. It can do so almost immediately after you consolidate. Because of one of the ways that you are rated for your credit score, it's not just the amount of the debt that you carry, but also how many different loan obligations that you have. Therefore, when you borrow student loans, they usually list them on your credit report per semester, just like the way that they issue them when you're in school per semester. So if you've been in school for five semesters and you've received loans for five semesters, they have those loans listed separately on your credit report, which means you look like you could owe separately $5,000 to $10,000 each, depending on the amount of loan that you receive per semester. And so that looks like different accounts. This could make it looks like you're requiring to make different payments with different interest rates. And that minimum payment each month could make the creditor that you're seeking to apply for kind of leery about your debt to income ratio. But once you consolidate into one single loan, once you combine those two loans into one single loan, the payment is probably going to be lower and you may receive probably an instant 50 to 100 points on your credit scores just for consolidation. Consolidation can also open you up to some of the new programs for Biden as far as student debt forgiveness, but most of the loans have to be consolidated and they have to be government loans, not private loans. And this could help raise your score. Let's talk about the credit reporting agencies. So. We have the main three, the major players, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, but we also have some secondary players there in the background that we don't hear much about. Take a look at those. But the main players, they're there to track your borrowing and your bill paying habits, and then they sell your reports to your credit, uh, about your credit behavior to those other secondary bureaus and also any account entities that you're looking to apply for. Then the lenders use this information to determine whether to give you a loan or credit card and how much interest to charge you. Now, when we start to talk about, hey, I'm looking at my reports and I'm consolidating my student loans, but what do I need to do to try and dispute some of these things that's already listed on my report? Well, if the information is right, but it's not good, it does have the right to stay. For example, if you made some late payments and you know you made those late payments, the creditors do have a right to leave those payments on your credit reports for a limited amount of time, which is called the statute of limitations. Each state has its own separate statute of limitations, and those could range from anywhere from three years to seven years, with bankruptcy, it could be 10 years. So if you find something on your credit reports that is a mistake, well, 
both the credit bureaus and the business that supplied the information to the credit bureaus have to correct the information that's wrong or that's incomplete, and they have to do it for free. To correct the mistakes, you will need to write to the credit bureaus, but sometimes you can go online and use the online link. That doesn't give you access to a track record per se, as it would if you write to the credit bureaus. Once you write to the credit bureaus, they will contact the business that you're disputing and they get 30 days to investigate your dispute. Make sure that you send copies of any documents with that dispute to the three credit bureaus. This is a simple sample of a dispute letter. Feel free to take a picture of it with your phone or snap a pic on camera. You want to include your name, address, the name and address of the credit bureaus. You want to include any account that you want to dispute and the reason that you want to dispute it, whether it's not the right amount, it's too old, it's not mine. Whatever your reason is, you want to include it with this letter and any identified account information so that TransUnion, Equifax, or Experian will know what account you're speaking of and the reason that you're disputing. The second example is a debt validation letter. This would be a follow-up letter to your first dispute letter. What you're doing is you're asking them to validate the debt that they say have been validated. Most times when you write in to dispute a debt, most times you will receive an automatic response saying the debt has been validated. Most times, not all times. But if you do receive that validation, follow up with a second letter. Most often you're not going to have a debt removed with just one attempt. So follow up with a debt validation letter. What you're doing, you're asking TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian to validate what they said is correct. If you are receiving calls or you feel that you are being hassled by collectors, the third letter is what you will use to ask them to cease and desist their attempts. Again, feel free to use your technology to grab a picture. Below that, you will find some instructions on what to do if you are receiving those debt collector calls. It's causing you any undue stress. Finances can bring about a lot of emotions, whether that's sadness, depressed, happiness, brings about a lot of feelings. And so we wanna make sure that your mental health is in good tech when we're speaking of your finances and your credit. Can debt collectors collect a debt that's several years old? Well, yes, but there are some rules to that. As mentioned, there are statutes of limitations for each state. And sometimes consumers feel that that statute of limitations is set there to punish them, but in many cases, it's there to help them. In many states, statutes of limitations are in place to prevent creditors and debt collectors from using legal action to collect on an older debt. Some debts, such as federal student loans, child support, and back taxes, have no statute of limitations, so they remain on your credit reports until settled or paid. Most states or jurisdictions have statutes of limitations between three and six years for most debts, but again, they could be longer. Texas was known for seven. If you're being sued by a debt collector and the debt is too old, you may have a defense to the lawsuit. You may have a claim against the collector for violating the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, which prohibits suing or threatening to sue for a time-barred debt or was also considered zombie debt. So you wanna make sure to learn your statutes of limitations in your state. You want to review all three credit reports and look for that close date, not the open date, the close date, and you start the time clock from there. If you have experienced any identity theft that is keeping your scores from being rebuilt, then you do have two different avenues where you can file a claim. Lots of people are familiar with filing with your police department for that identity theft, but you can also visit the website for the Federal Trade Commission and they have a link for identity theft. You can submit and upload 
a police report if you have one, but if not, the Federal Trade Commission does allow you to start an investigation through their website. For those of you that may be feeling overwhelmed and feel like you have no option, that you cannot rebuild, that you don't have the option to make any settlement payments and you just don't feel a relief, well, you do have the option to file for bankruptcy on your own or what is known as pro se. Each district in Texas has its own website and you will have to Google your local area. The website will allow you to file Chapter 7 bankruptcy on your own. It will give you instructions, links to the different forms, and give you information on payments and fees. And even if you don't have the finances for paying for the bankruptcy filing, they do have options to help with sponsorship for those funds. To wrap it up, we want to be money smart. As mentioned, we want to spend within our income. We want to create a monthly spending plan or a budget. And basically that's listing our income and subtracting all of our expenses. Hopefully this will allow us to create an emergency fund because savings will help us to prepare for emergencies, which will help us to avoid of using credit. We are learning credit basics now. And again, the financial coaches with Family Houston are here to help. If you are on your credit journey, try to remain in that 30% utilization. Try to pay on time, meaning before 30 days, so as you don't lose any FICO points. If you have any credit cards and you paid them off, try not to close them unless you have more than one of them because having no credit or new credit can't hurt you the same. Another pro tip, there are two types of inquiries. Just know this. There are hard inquiries. There are soft inquiries. Hard inquiries do cost you points, and soft inquiries does not cost you points. Soft inquiries are when you're reviewing your credit reports for your education. But if you have not reviewed your credit reports and you don't know your FICO scores, try not to make any hard inquiries because you could be causing yourself harm. This is a simple sample of a budget that we use here in office. Most likely you may not have a dollar amount for each line item, but I find that this particular budget lists most line items for individuals, personal budgets. Everyone is customized, but this particular budget does list most items needed or wanted in a household. What are your next steps? Review your three credit reports and FICO scores. You can go to annualcreditreport.com. Remember, they offer you three free credit reports. The FICO scores are not free. You can visit Credit Karma. They offer you two of the bureaus and you will get a Vantage score, not FICO. You can also meet with the Family Houston Financial Coach. and You'll get a free TransUnion trans credit report review and a free FICO score. You can also, also ask us about secured credit cards or loans. And in summary, be credit smart, plan ahead, stay away from bad financial products. A good credit score is an asset and please use credit wisely. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Sonia Reeves. Um, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Chris, for sharing the credit information. Um, to our audience, uh, let's talk a little bit about how to improve income through alternative em employment, which is also very important for financial stability. There are many opportunities, so let's focus um, on that next. Let me just move our little pictures out of the way. Okay. So alternative employment opportunities are very important because additional income helps pay for necessary expenses like your mortgage, your rent, utilities, food, or even car payments. 
In addition, it helps meeting other personal goals, such as short-term, long-term savings, education, a new home, or even traveling. You can use these opportunities to develop your and improve your professional skills, which can make you more marketable for future employers. Remember, clocking in and out for full-time work is not the only way to earn an income by any means. So let's see. Okay. Oops. Here we go. So we've all heard of Uber and um, I'm so sorry. I am trying to... There we go. I'm sorry. Um, we've heard of Uber and Lyft. Um, and you know that they're both ride sharing companies that hires independent contractors as drivers. And they you can earn money on any schedule. And it's a great alternative to any other type of earning opportunities. And so if you look to the left um, on this graph, you can see the average wage is $13 an hour in Texas. And it can go as high up as $19.93. And for Lyft, a little lower at $13 an hour and $18.14, depending on, you know, all of these types of jobs depends on where you're working, how much you put into it, and the actual location and the demand of the job in your particular area. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about earning by delivering and our shopping. So I know we're all familiar with DoorDash or Instacart. And so if we look here on the graphs, how much does a delivery driver DoorDash make in Texas? So it's an average of $15.94, and this is taken out of ZipRecruiter. Um, and so the average annual salary would be around $33,150 a year. However, there are definitely many clients that put a lot more into these types of jobs and make quite a bit higher. The same for Instacart. It's all about what you put into the job and what area you're in and the demand in the area that you're, you're actually doing the job in. How about earning through part-time work? So if you're a student or a stay-at-home parent, maybe this is something that would work for you. An additional 20 hours a month could earn you $880 to $1,400 a month based on your hourly rate. Part-time hospital patients have all types of shifts from 14 and $19 an hour. Amazon, Daikin, are examples of really big uh, manufacturing organizations that also hire for assembly work for $15 to $20 an hour. And then you've got facility type work through Compass Career Groups, which can also offer $13 to $18 an hour. There's airport employment, which offers card associate opportunities, airline ramp opportunities, or greeter opportunities. And those can earn you $14 to $19 an hour. So you may want to consider some of those types of work, some, type, some of those work as well. Okay. Um, how about earning income through your own business? Can you fill a need um, through your own passion? And so I have an example here of a working nurse in Houston that had a, a great idea in creating a special soap after her kids would come home sick every day from daycare. She invented a soap that would motivate kids in washing their hands, and now Happy Hygiene and Company came to life, a children's soap line featuring fun characters and all natural ingredients. She sells the products at local markets, and she also promotes them on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. So she's still waiting for her viral moment, but in the meantime, she has one employee to stock up on inventory and ensure that her manufacturing process is ready if she ever gets a huge influx of orders. So far, she's been in business for about four years, but her her yearly income is about $102,000 a year, which is pretty good um, if you're also a nurse, if you want to add that together. Okay. How about increasing your income by learning a new skill? Vocational training is offered through local nonprofits throughout the Houston area. And these are a few examples. Training in electrical um, pre-apprenticeship is $20.57 an hour. Certified nursing assistant can run from $30,000 to $43,000 a year. Customer service, training, customer service training is available and that um, you can earn $30,000 to $40,000 a year. Um, EKG interpretation can earn you $30,000 to $40,000 a year. 
forklift, forklift operator certification can earn you $34,000 to $53,000 a year. And then you've got your security officer certification, which can also offer you $30,000 to $47,000 a year. Now, all these are available through our nonprofit, different nonprofit organizations that um, we partner with. And so um, these are also something that you can think about. And if you're interested in any of that, definitely want to reach out to one of our coaches. Continued, earn income by learning a new skill. While you have free time, you can take a course to learn useful transferable skills such as basic programming, graphic design, or any program that may be related to your field. You can then advertise your skill on social media or job boards and earn income. So we've got three examples that you can reach out to. So Workforce Solutions Scholarship supports training for some of the region's high skill, high growth occupations from marketing, financial logistics, web developers, and medical professions. LinkedIn is another great resource that you can use where you can learn Excel training, interpersonal communication, all kinds of different courses, as well as Coursera. Coursera, you can get a professional level training and earn a, creden a credential recognized certificate by leading companies. And don't forget your local junior colleges that also offer all types of training and educational opportunities. All right, we also wanna look at earning with freelance work. So use your skills to, to freelance, determine your strongest skills and consider freelancing. You can consult for companies in your field and promote your services on job boards. You can use Upwork, People Per Hour, FlexJobs and Design Kill. They are all freelance sites that pay individuals by projects that can last from one week to six months or even become permanent type work. It depends on what you want to do, but um, and like you, and like you see here to the left on the um, the earnings on the hourly wages. It just depends on what you're going to put into the program. Some people want to do twenty projects a year. Some people want to do five projects a year. So that will determine your hourly rate or your yearly rate. But it's definitely something to look into. You can earn, earn by participating in surveys. So you can sign up with companies that conduct market research. You can input your demographics and the companies will send alerts when you may qualify for a study. You can complete surveys or participate in paid focus groups. Example, Swagbucks pays users to engage in online actions like taking surveys, watching media content, conducting internet researches, and playing games. And so here's the same thing. If you look at the 25th percentile and the top earners, it's just going to vary depending on what you put into these type of um, opportunities. How about using your resources? Have you ever thought about renting out your house or your room or a space? There's path splits, spare room, Airbnb, or roomies. There's sites where individuals can advertise their house, room, or space. And on an average, you can rent a room for 600 to $1,200 a month, or even more. It really depends on your location and amenities that are offered. Now, some people might call this passive income, but that's not really what I would call it. I would really call it a job, an uh, alternative type of income, because you're actually ma ma maintaining your, your writing up agreements um, to your renters. And so it, it is, it's a job. Um, okay. And the other thing you can do is sign up for car share services that allows uh, uses to rent your car. These sites claim you can earn $500 a month. Turo is the top car sharing marketplace. And Hi Hirecar is a rental service that enables you to list your car and generate passive income. Get Around is a top peer-to-peer -peer car sharing service that you can use to rent your car on an hourly basis. Let's shift gears by looking at teaching. How about earning by substituting teaching online or tutoring? You can sign up as a tutor online through a tutoring company or work independently. You can teach subjects you're comfortable with, like languages, math, algebra, writing, or even standardized test preparations. You can review these tutors, um, varsity tutors, VipKit, OutSchool, and you can earn $18 to $80 an hour. And I've actually used um, a couple for my son and, and yeah, 
they um they can charge you and it's usually 60 to 80 it's high so it's a great opportunity for um any people that like you teach other people and it's it'd be wonderful to look into that alternative type of employment how about earning income on social media sell an idea for an app if you have an idea for an app you might consider selling it to a development company research the market create a business plan and meet with investors they did it. Facebook did, Facebook did it. TikTok did it. Rumble did it. You could be the next one. How about start monetizing a blog? Create a blog and consider joining an ad network to monetize it. The more followers you have, the more money you can make. So you can promote your blog and social media with post expert excerpts and links. And if you see here, the monthly earnings for pro bloggers. And it all ranges. If you look at the 28%, that's under $10 a month. If you look at um, the blue at 4%, that's over $10,000 a month. So again, it's what you put into it, but it's a great opportunity. A lot of people are using social media for alternative income in these days, as we know. Our, uh, continued earning income on social media. Again, if you're looking to promote your products in social media, if you have a large social media following already, you could work as a social media influencer. Brands pay you to promote their products or services on your accounts. You may get paid per post or based on the number of um, users that, who buy products from your unique links. So general averages, according to Statista, a nano influencer can make $195 per post on Instagram. A mid-tier influencer can make $1,221 per post on Instagram. A, micro, a macro influencer can make $1,804 per post on Instagram. It's so there you go. And it's definitely been said that there are celebrities that can make over a million dollars for one post, which is pretty incredible. So if you've got those social media um, passion, I think this is a great thing to do for alternative income. And last but not least, this is something that um, we don't talk a lot about is um, earning income as an authorized dealer. So an authorized dealer is an individual or a company authorized by, by a manufacturer to sell this product. So in this example, you have T-Mobile, AT&T, and Vivint, where you can sell products from these well-known brands to residential clients and some businesses online or your own retail outlet. But of course, the reason people like this is because they don't have to have their own brick and mortar retail outlet, right? You're just, you're distributing their product. And most of the time they're gonna do the installs. Most of the time they're gonna take care of for you. So you're doing most of the sales is what you're looking at. So you've got T-Mobile and AT&T, which is the cell phone, we all know that. The internet services, which fiber is a big deal right now. And individuals will earn the money through their commissions. Vivint would be your home security sales and average earnings can range from zero to a million dollars a year. It really just depends on what you're gonna do and how many people you have working for you or if you're just doing it on your own. So thank you for your attendance today. I know that was a little quick, but we hope you enjoyed our Lunch and Learn um, presentation and we are ready for any questions that you may have. So um, here are, is our information, Family Houston. Um, you can contact us through this phone number. And then of course, our emails are down here. Um, and I will go ahead and check the chat to see if we have any questions. So it looks like we have a lot of questions. Chris has gone through and answered some of them. So Sonia, if you would just start, um, I'm gonna just start at the top. So someone asked the difference between a credit and a FICO score. Chris did a great job of explaining FICO score. But could you talk about maybe the difference between FICO and Vantage score, you or Chris? Sonia, you go ahead. And... Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Your answer right now, Mattel. So go ahead, Chris. the difference between a FICO and a Vantage score, as mentioned, the FICO score ranges from 300 to 850. The Fair Isaac score is the most oldest and mainly used score. The Vantage score is a new and up and coming score through Credit Karma. And it does have a different range. I can't call that range out from memory. I think it started, it ends in like 900 or something like that. But again, that's not the mainly used score. Credit Karma does use 
at Vantage Sport to offer you second chance credit accounts. Those second chance credit accounts will help you build your FICO score. And so by accepting those accounts through Credit Karma, you will have the opportunity to build your FICO score. Credit Karma sometimes gives you tools and resources and suggestions on what cards are going to fit you or that you will be an excellent uh, approval odds for. And if I'm not mistaken, they've already gone through regulation where they can't give you any false information. So if Credit Karma gives you that Vantage score and you're in the market to rebuild your score and they tell you that a card is an excellent fit for you or if a loan is an excellent fit for you, if you apply for it, then they usually guarantee that you will receive that particular card. There is no such mm, per se resource like that with your FICO score. Again, the FICO score, Fair Isaac score, is the mainly used score and it's used by the major creditors, home loans, um, automobiles, and things of that nature. Again, Credit Karma's Up and Karma website, with the Up and Karma Vantage score, it does help to rebuild your credit, but it's not your FICO score. And you always need to know that because if you walk in somewhere, to buy a home, a car, or whatever, and you call out that credit karma score, you will be disappointed because it's not your FICO score. Thanks, Chris. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, maybe, so uh, Sony, maybe you can help us with this one as you talked about um, becoming an entrepreneur in your presentation. Someone asked, um, and Chris gave a, an answer, but are there, are there start um, services that will help you start an LLC? Um, you know, sometimes like Rocket, I think it's Rocket Lawyer or um, like Taylor Brand, stuff like that. Are there services, are there any free services um, that can help start an LLC? Um, Score.com is where I um, normally send um, my clients where they're able to match themselves with different entrepreneurs based on what they're passionate about. And that's where they get um, a lot more help. Fantastic. And then we have another question. Do you have any suggestions for getting a remote job? Remote jobs are out there. Um, they're everywhere. The issue with remote jobs is um, a lot of scams around remote jobs is what I've noticed. But there are, there are legitimate remote jobs as well. What I suggest to my clients when they're actually looking for those jobs, if they find it on whatever platform it is, whether it's Indeed, um, uh, ZipRecruiter, uh, LinkedIn even, I tell them to go directly to that organization and make sure it's online and apply on their platform. That's where you can get rid of that variable. And so I think we have time for maybe one more question. And I just want to remind everybody, this a recording will live on our website, familyhouston.org. You will be able to uh, visit the website, download the recording. You'll be able to share it with um, anyone else that you may know that you that you know that may need the uh, the information. So so please don't hesitate to visit the website. Um, just give us at least 24 hours and that recording should be on the website. So the last question is, Chris, maybe you can answer this one for us. If you consolidate your credit cards, will that affect your credit score? Oh, Chris, you're muted. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And so any sort of consolidation will probably affect your credit score in a positive manner because you are taking several debts and consolidating them and making them into one payment instead of having them spread out over your credit reports um, separately, making it look like you have several obligations to pay each month with different interest rates, as we mentioned during the presentation. So making that into one lump sum payment with one interest rate can only help you in a positive uh, upward manner. Fantastic. Well, this will conclude our financial stability lunch and learn. I wanna express um, my sincere gratitude to Chris and Sonia for their yeah. invaluable insight today. Um, if you are interested in personalized coaching, and would think you could benefit from one-on-one -on -one sessions with a financial coach or an employment coach, please visit our website at familyhouston.org. 
you are able to sign up there for the services. Um, please stay informed. We have some more events that are coming up. So keep an eye out for those announcements. We really appreciate each and every one of you taking time out of your day. I know we're all so busy to engage with us today. Uh, so thank you to all of you. And I wish you all success in your journey toward financial empowerment and stability. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.